glad to be in the house with you, ladies and gentlemen. 11.14 is the time, and it might be just about that time, ladies and gentlemen, where uh, we bring on my main man, t Boss for uh, words of wisdom and moments of meditation. t Boss, can you hear me? Yes, I can. And good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning. What a beautiful autumn day. I know, boys and girls, it's not going to be 75, but it is spectacular out there. Uh, T. Boz is, in order to do this show, T. Boz is up at 4 a.m. Uh, because I'm uh, got a flight to Plainville right after the show. So those of you who like to call in won't be able to do that part today. Uh, and I just want to thank everyone for the wonderful um, comments on the two friends pieces, the two part of that we did uh, the last two weeks. But uh, T. Bod's been up since 4 a.m. and uh, it was a beautiful 36 degrees when I went out to the barn. But it's beautiful now. Please don't wait for it always to be 75 degrees, everyone. Go out there and enjoy this beautiful autumn weather uh, that we've been having. What a November. Uh, got out to vote the other day. And who do I see? is our good friend and host, Jock Williams from the Feel Good Show. Come on in, come on in. You're not late. Go ahead, come on in. Take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, sit right down. Plenty of chairs, plenty of chairs. There's coffee over there. So we saw Jock Williams, um, my neighbor and I, who took me to vote, Susan. Thank you, Susan, for that. And uh, it was such a long line where Jock was. And when I got up to the line, it wasn't people, you know, getting their vote stuff ready. It was beautiful women with baseballs, and they were having Jock sign the baseballs. And so I, uh, I walked up, and a lady handed me a baseball, and I said, do you want me to sign it? And she said, no, hang on to this. I have five other baseballs I want Jock to sign. So, you know, they just follow him wherever he is, and he had on a blue hat and a red sweatshirt, so he was, you know, right there in the middle, but he does a great job. He talks about community and unity. And I got to tell you, this guy walks the walk and talks the talk. And uh, now I know why he has a lunch with Governor uh, Ned Lamont. But anyway, beyond all of that, thank you, Jock, for your volunteering, not only on the radio, but in the community. You really do a great job. So is everyone enjoying the short days? Uh, You know, two o'clock, the sun falls out of the sky. But wait, I have good news for you. Thank God we don't live on Uranus. The, the, the planet Uranus is sideways. And so Uranus, you ready for this? They have 42 years of daylight and 42 years of darkness. Could you imagine? Can you say procreate? I mean, 42 years of darkness and then 42 years of daylight. So I know it's getting dark by 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30. But, folks, we're going to hit the 21st of December. We're not that far away. And then we're going to start going back the other way. So um, just be patient and be thankful that God put us the third rock from the sun. We're not out there with uh, Uranus laying on our side. Uh, some quick shout-outs, okay? We didn't do these last week because we had a little bit of abbreviated show because Jock, again, was supporting the community by bringing on uh, different uh, political people to share their views. Our shout out, my brother Stephen and my sister-in-law Lynn, fantastic autumn dinner at their beautiful, what they call the Lindley Inn, beautiful dinner my sister-in-law made. The only thing my friend said is um, not enough mums in front of his house. I'm only kidding, folks. Beautiful, beautiful mum display, bales of hay, corn stalks, Fred and Lucille, Jim and Peggy, uh, Connie Pontonio, Lady Boz and I. What an awesome, awesome evening we had. So we want to thank him for that. Um, Jackson's first Halloween, we had a little thing out here. He was a lion. Er, and uh, I tell you, one minute you're the kid with the bag trick-or-treating. The next minute you're the parent telling your kids, say thank you. you know. And then the next minute you're the grandfather holding the baby. And, you know, he's only eight months old, but you're saying say thank you, right? So it goes that fast, boys and girls. Enjoy the journey. Um, It's quick. But we had a great time with him on the uh, front porch. We saw a big shot at Oakdale. Awesome show, boys and girls. If they ever come around, they're the only sanctioned Billy Joel band. Uh, Liberty DeVito actually played in that band at one time. Uh, If you ever have the opportunity to see these guys, go, 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 go. It's a fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, show. Billy Joel music mixed in with some other pop music. And the last plug, 
new show after the miscellaneous morning show with the great Holly Pons. She does a fabulous miscellaneous morning show. Unfortunately, she has to deal with me calling in. But Amazing Tales, I think John brought that on, Jock. It is an amazing show. The uh, the host does a wonderful job of talking about things that happened uh, in, in the past and just a great show. So Amazing Tales at uh, 10 o'clock on Mondays, right after the miscellaneous morning show. You want to catch that. Okay, our talk today is going to be about faith. What? Didn't we do that once before, t Buzz? Yes, but our faith is challenged, right? Things happen. The Ukraine, we hear of someone with a, a diagnosed, maybe a parent passes away. Um, some bills pile up, right? So our faith is constantly challenged. So we're going to talk about faith today and the format that we're going to use. Everybody likes the format. The format is uh, faith, what faith is, in my opinion, and what faith is not. Okay, and then some things about my faith, and then, of course, scripture verses, some pop culture verses, and then we have a takeaway that I think is one of the best I've ever found, and actually you'll be very interested in the uh, woman's name, her last name, when we get to that. So let's get to faith. Luke, chapter 17, verse 5. Here it comes. Increase our faith. The apostles say to Jesus, because they had blundered some sort of exorcism, increase our faith, like an exclamation. And what does Jesus do? He turns it around as if they're asking him a question. Don't we need our faith increased? Sometimes our faith is low. Sometimes it's high, depending on where we are. But what Jesus is going to tell the apostles in a minute is what he's telling us. Okay? And so when they say increase our faith, he has a wonderful opportunity to, to uh, make a parable that they can understand. And Jesus replies to them, and, uh, yep, okay, if you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, now a mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds ever created. If you have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you can move that mulberry tree over to the other side of the pond and have it planted. You could say to that mountain, move, and it'll move. So rather than say to them, when they said increase our faith, that abracadabra, there, you got more faith, what does he do? He internalizes it. He gives them a parable and says, it's not how great the faith. Faith is not from an external thing that comes out from somewhere. Faith is within us, a gift from God that we have through a prayer life, and through a relationship with him. We look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, okay? Now, to him who is able to do measurably more than we ask for, according to his power, here's the part I love, within us. It doesn't say within angels. It doesn't say within saints. It doesn't say within, you know, things like that. It says the power within us us. Boom. So when the apostles say increase our faith, see, when you read scripture, it's the apostles, but scripture is living. So we say the same thing they said, because they're just a bunch of guys, fishermen and whatever, just like we're just a bunch of guys and girls. And so we wake up sometimes and we say increase our faith. But what Jesus is telling us, the faith is already within you. It's not the size, as tiny as a mustard seed. If that's all you have, you can still move a mulberry bush. Okay? So we're not David Copperfield, kind of abracadabra faith, but the faith to get us through hard times, the faith to get us through good times, the faith to just get us through. We look at Hebrews, and I use this um, at Jim and Peggy's wedding, chapter 11, verse 1, and it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. So faith is not something that's sitting on a shelf like a jar, okay? Faith is a gift from God. Faith is not something that you get more of because you go to more masses or you go to more services or you hang more banners or you light more candles. That's not how you get faith. Faith has already been given to you. And as tiny as it is, it doesn't matter. You have that faith. Jesus says to them, tiny as a mustard seed. He's trying to focus them 
on even the tiniest bit of faith is has power, has great, the power within us. We look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not on your own doing as a result of works. Boom. Now, this is where a lot of us Christian faiths have a lot of challenges with. But you have been saved by grace through faith. What are they talking about? The faith that's already within you. But to realize that faith is there, you can't question it and externalize it and say, well, when things are going good, I got great faith. When things are going bad, my faith is low. As tiny as a mustard seed. So when they say to him, increase our faith, it's almost like a demand. He turns around into a question. How do I increase my faith? Prayer life. Okay, realizing that you have faith within you. And so a lot of us believe that, oh, you know, if we hang those banners and, you know, we go to those masses or we go to those services or we sing in the choir, those are all good things. But you do those things because of that tiny mustard seed of faith that you have within you. You don't get more faith by singing in the choir. The definition of holy is not, you do not become holy by doing good things. You do good things because you're already holy. Because you're already children of God. Where are we at the time? Okay, we're okay. All right, so now we look at this other gentleman, which I love this. His name is Albert Hubbard. And uh, he lived from 1856 to uh, 1915. And it said, God will not look you over. Now listen to this, boys and girls. Put your pens down. God will not look you over for medals, degrees, or diplomas, but for scars. In other words, the scars of the things that we do wrong when we lose our temper with our children, our spouse, at work, if we're not talking to a co-worker, if after this election that just passed, we still have aggravation to people, we make it known. I mean, everyone has a right to their opinion. That's why my father fought the Great War, and so many of you others fathered and grandfathered, right? So whether the people agree with you or not, they have a right to their own opinion. They have a right to vote for the people that they feel like Jock said that are qualified. But at the time of judgment, God is not going to look at your medal, degrees, and diplomas, but your scars. So a lot of us think that we're going to earn our way into heaven. We're going to get more faith by doing all this stuff. A very good friend of mine who is a priest up at Holy Family Retreat Center said to me, Boz, the saddest confessions I ever hear when people are dying is when they say, Father, I missed Mass. I missed 10 Masses. I didn't go to Mass for a year. He says he almost wants to weep because they feel that it's like a spreadsheet. A lot of us think that we're going to earn and get more faith by doing more stuff. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm not saying not to go to mass and not to go to serve. I'm not saying that. But my brother, who's listened to this show, I'll be honest with you because we're transparent here, does not go to church. But every night, he reads Bishop Barron's the website, the Catholic bishop, and he really gets a lot out of that piece. So he, my brother is a man of faith. He's enriching his faith in reading scripture and things like that, even though he doesn't sit in a pew every week. So there is no, God is not going to say, well, you know, Steve didn't go to church and Bob went to church. It doesn't work that way. Faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Let me see. Okay, we've got two more minutes. And so a lot of us think that we're doing stuff. We're going to do this, that, and the other thing, and we're going to, we're going to become successfully more faithful. Very quickly, when I moved from Bridgeport, I sold the t- my brother and I owned a two-family house, which he and his wife own now. And so he bought the top half. We sold it to him, and he owned the old house. And when he came home after we moved to Torrington, and now for 18 years, my late wife and I and the kids lived upstairs, so there's always lights on, right? People moving around. He pulls in the, she told this story last week, he pulls in the driveway, and he looks upstairs, and it's black. It's black. There's nobody upstairs after 18 years. His brothers, sister-in-law, and nieces have moved. 
And he looks upstairs and he says, God, because now he wants to rent the apartment. God, please don't let me fail. Boom. He puts his faith in God and he asks for more faith and strength. He was stepping out in something new. He was taking a step of faith. And I'm going to get to something Martin Luther King said right after the break. But his faith was so strong that what he did was go to God first. That's how you get more faith and strengthen your faith. Let's go to the break now, Jock, because I have a bunch of things I want to cover. It's 1128. So let's do the break now so we don't run out of time. Hello, Mr. Williams. I guess Jock is signing autographs. All right, let's keep moving along, and hopefully it's 1129. Jock, do you want to do the break now? All right, so let's just keep going what we're doing, and then uh, we'll come back to it. So that's what he did. He put his faith into, into God. Martin Luther King says, faith is taking the first step, even though you can't see the rest of the staircase. So my brother was, couldn't see the rest of the staircase. He didn't know that he was going to have a, a nice rental in, income and a nice business proposition upstairs. Then he and his wife uh, purchased a house next door, which they call the cottage, beautiful 1914 craftsman style house. And again, he said, Lord, please don't help me fail. So the faith that he had was putting that faith in God, and then God gave him the strength. So when the apostles say, increase our faith, what really you have to do to increase your faith, it's not abracadabra, it's to lean and trust. Faith is trusting in God. Okay, Jock, you want to do the break now? It's 1130. Yes, we can go ahead and do that. We want to thank you for tuning into this segment, Words of Wisdom and Moments of Meditation with T-Boz. And we want to thank our sponsors for their generosity and support. want to give a big, huge shout-out to the Nutmegs Conservatory for the Arts, Torrington Savings Bank, TDI, Torrington Distributors Incorporated, and Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. Thank you so very much for allowing us to bring you the quality community radio programming that we're doing doing so at this time and we'll turn the floor back over to t-boss for words of wisdom and moments of meditation thank you boss soren king regard who lived between 1813 and 1855 he was a danish um philosopher said that the function of prayer is not to influence god but rather to change the nature of the person praying and so i just gave a revealing example of my brother who he wasn't trying to influence God. He wasn't, he said, God, please help me not to fail. He didn't say, you better make this, this thing go. Okay. He leaned on the Lord, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs three, verse five, trusting in God, trusting in God's love. That's what faith is. Faith is not, as I keep saying, doing a bunch of mechanical things. Those are outward signs. Those are fine. But without faith, they're just mechanical things. You don't get faith from those things. Like Albert Hubbard said, God's not going to look at your medals and your degrees, but your scars. Let's look at loss of faith. Jesus is crucified, right? He's hanging on the cross for six hours in agony. And what do all his buddies do? The apostles, boom, they're gone. They take off. They're out of there. See you. Bye. Boom. We don't want to get killed. They, they traveled with him for three years. They were out of there. Who stays at the cross? John, his mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and they say the other Mary. Okay? So they're staying there looking at their hopes and their dreams, a man they had faith in who's now been totally disfigured. What their hopes and dreams were have turned into a puddle of blood. But they don't lose faith. Because it says in Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. You bet that they had to have more faith because what they were looking at was not good. What they were looking at was a suffering, dying rabbi. 
Mary's son. Everything that they hoped and had faith in was dead. So they thought. So we walk by faith, not by sight. Do we sometimes see only the disfigured Jesus in our life? Do we always see, only see the disfigured problems in our life, the divorces, the breakups, the death, and things like that? Do we, like the apostles say, increase our faith because we're down, we're up, we're down, we're up? We're not the stock market. Their faith, those people who stood at the cross, was steady. Their faith was not based on what they saw outside of them, but what they felt inside of them. As tiny as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. In Dante's Inferno, there's a great quote. Do not be afraid, most of us are, do not be afraid. Our faith, faith, not faith, our faith cannot be taken from us. It's a gift. Boom. Now, if I didn't trust in the Lord, I never would have been with Veronica, like it says, with uh, Martin Luther, uh, says, be willing to take the first step, even though you can't see the whole staircase. If I was afraid, and if I didn't trust in God, I would not have gotten into that Uber car five and a half years ago with two people smoking, playing headbanging music by myself, going to a dance that i never been before with my stick and having no idea where I was going, but my trust was in God that he was leading me to the new life that I have today. And a lot of those people are listening to the show right now. I was not in a pew. I was not lighting a candle. It was something from within that pushed me, the spirit, to go to that dance. If I did what Martin Luther says and Martin Luther King, it says, do not, I didn't see the whole staircase five and a half years ago. I went in the new cheese. I didn't believe me. I didn't see the whole staircase. I barely saw the first step, no pun intended. And Veronica did the same thing a couple of years before me. With faith, trust in God, we went to that dance. And by the grace of God, we now have this wonderful relationship, like my friends Fred and Lucille and Barbara and Stan, Jim and Peggy, goes on and on and on. So our faith is a gift. Our faith is a gift. And so... I moved by faith, and I said, just like my brother, God, help me get through this. Mahatma Gandhi says, you must not lose faith in humanity. Wow. Because if humanity was an ocean and there were a few drops of dirty water, the whole ocean wouldn't be dirty. So a lot of us are losing faith because of things that are happening. There's a few drops of dirty water, one bad apple, right? But that doesn't it doesn't pollute the entire ocean. Sometimes we're so busy looking at the dirty drops in the water, we're not looking at the whole ocean. Faith is tiny as a mustard seed. Increase our faith. You gotta look at the whole ocean. You gotta look at the whole ocean. And sometimes we're just so into our circumstances, those are the dots of dirty water, that we're not looking at the bigger picture and the blessings that are around us. St. Augustine, who's one of the founders of the church, and as influential as um, St. Paul, says, pray, though everything dependent on God, and work as though everything depended on you. So there again, faith, what does it get back to? Prayer, personal relationship with God, the power within us. It's already there, but some of us think because it's not big, we may have faith as tiny as a mustard seed, but boys and girls, we have a big God. And so even if it's as tiny as a mustard seed, it's still that powerful to move that mountain and mulberry bush. The interesting thing, very quickly, we just got back from St. Augustine. The reason why Pedro Menendez, who was the founder of the state of Florida and became the first governor, named it St. Augustine is because as they were sailing from Spain, they first saw land 11 days before they landed. They landed on September the 8th, the feast of the birth of the Blessed Mother. And so they first saw land on August the 28th. That's the day St. Augustine died in um, 430 A.D., and so he named it St. Augustine. Just a little side note there, boys and girls. I'm sure you would appreciate those things. And faith is love, because if you truly love God, just like if you love your spouse, you have faith in them. You, it's a different kind of faith. You love your child, you have faith in them. So faith, the other uh, component of faith is love, a deep love. Hafiz, which is a Muslim term for 
memorizing the entire Quran, says this, and this is beautiful. And still, uh, let me read this, and I'll bring it into the topic, and then we'll get to the takeaway. We're almost there. And still, after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. <laughs> like that light lights up the whole sky. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed something because of my vision. Okay. You owe me. Look what happens. A love like that lights up the whole sky. So let me read it again. And the, and still after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens. A love like that lights up the whole sky. So our love for God, our love in trusting him, our love in respecting his goodness, his plan for us. Jeremiah, I have a plan for you. That total trust, that total submission, that's what Jesus did. He totally trusted in God. When he was carrying that cross up that hill, at any moment he was God, he could have disbanded the mission. Do you realize that, boys and girls? He could have disbanded the mission. He could have just blown that whole thing open, caused an earthquake, it all would have been done. But no, his faith and his heavenly father himself had him carry that cross and get nailed to it. So our faith has to be a conviction, but it has to come from love. Jesus did what he did out of total love. So right back to what we said about what the son says, you owe me. And with a love like that, look how it lights up the sky. That's what true faith is. You know, I see a lot of things on Facebook. People say, I had a blessed day. Oh, I'm feeling so blessed. Because a lot of things are going hunky-dory in their life. But can you feel that way when it's not? Like what Mary and John and Mary Madeline saw on the cross, okay? Taking a step of faith, realizing that what you have within you is greater than the circumstances around you. Getting back to Martin Luther King, my friend Jim, who started his business uh, 25, almost 30 years ago, he couldn't see the whole staircase, but he took, and he's a man of faith, he took the first step. So if we truly trust God, if we truly believe in God, if we truly feel the love of God, then our faith, even though as tiny as a mustard seed, we have it. We don't say like the apostles, increase our faith. Like you're pulling into a pit stop at a, at a NASCAR thing, and all of a sudden Jesus puts on new tires, and he puts a new exhaust, and all of a sudden, boom, you're sailing down the street. You already have the faith. But what we all need to do, me as well, what we all need to do is realize that and pray that that faith is strengthened. Now, let's get to the takeaway, because you're all going to love this. Okay. This woman's name is Corey Ten. Now listen to her last name. Corey Ten Boom. <laughs> and everyone knows that's my favorite word. Boom. And this is what she says. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Boom. And I'll tell you something interesting about Corey Ten Boom. She and her family helped Jewish people escape from the Nazis during World War II. They let them live in their house. She died in 1983 at age 91, even though the Germans put her in a concentration camp. And she was tortured there, but she got through it. So she really had to believe in a known God when you're moving the poor Jewish people basically underground, having them stay at your house, knowing that the Nazis are knocking at your door looking for these people. So let me read that one again. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Trust is faith. Are you guys having an unknown future? Are you having an unknown day? Do you have things that have come into your life that are testing your faith, challenging your faith? Are you going to say to Jesus, increase our faith? Or are you going to realize that though sometimes the faith is tiny as a mustard seed, that that's what you have, you can still move mountains. You can still succeed. You can still love like the sun that lights up the sky. Like uh, 
Ken Regard said, prayer is not to influence God, but to change the nature of the person praying. So pray that your faith is strengthened through good times and bad, and realize, as it says in Ephesians, that the faith is the power within us. God's power. Think of that after this show ends. God's power within you. Jock, you want to tie a bow and get to this song. And by the way, folks, if you're a person of faith, make sure people are talking, talking about you. Okay? So, Jock, you want to tie a bow on the show, and then we'll get to the song, and Friday Eve. Well, I do believe that uh, faith can definitely move mountains, and faith is something that we don't even have to ask for. it. It's a gift. Right. And... All we have to do is just believe. And um, it may seem, well, it can't be just that simple. Well, yeah, it kind of is. And once you exercise those faith muscles, you won't have to um, work them as hard because they will continue to uh, flex themselves. So faith becomes more faith, becomes... More faith becomes more faith. So, uh, you know, we get despondent and, you know, at times we're, um, you know, discouraged. But those are the times when that faith rises to the surface and you realize that you can be more than a conqueror and that you can achieve everything that you were set out to do. And if we look at you know, the big picture, what, you know, what does God really want from us? Well, he wants us to prosper and to love one another. And you think that, you know, why is that so difficult? <laughs> well, because we have a lot of competing issues that, uh, that try to take away our faith and try to undermine the gifts that we've been bestowed with. And that's why sometimes we find ourselves in very tough situations, not because necessarily of anything that we've done, but sometimes it's just the way of the world. And knowing the way of the world, understanding that these things can happen, requires us to have an even more um, resource for faith so that we can overcome those situations. So as usual, as always, uh, you're coming through loud and clear t bars and uh, it's very um, uh, beneficial for us to have your contributions here at WAPJ and specifically on the Feel Good Show so that we can share these um, insights with, with our audience. So uh, thank you once again. Thank you, and I just will quick piggyback. I like what you said complicated it's not complicated god came to us as a child okay so don't complicate it and some of us think we have to do a bunch of things and you said a gift and i ditto that you're spot on so i just wanted to say we're on the same wavelength when you said don't complicate it some of us do make it too complicated so with that friday eve and uh can't wait to go to the next election to see what you're going to be doing. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, this guy, they want that some of the girls there were from Ohio and they want to change the name to Jock Williams High School. So <laughs> what can I tell you? I said to one girl, did you find these baseballs in the outfield? They said, no, no one hit Jock Williams. We found these baseballs all in the dugout and in the, you know, in, out in the, in the driveway somewhere. They weren't in uh, fields. So, Happy Friday Eve. Happy fall. Jock, spin the song. We'll see all of you next week at our fabulous Thanksgiving show. Bye-bye.